Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. I hope everyone has been keeping up with what has been a very busy week in the world of, well, British swimming to start with and world swimming as well, European swimming. There's been some amazing swims and me and Dan are going to take you through our review of the European short course champs on this week's show. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, it's in summary, I think we did very, very well. I mean, some of the times hit and some of the medals, obviously, that we we won as well was quite incredible. Uh, We're going to try and go through it day by day. I think we don't want to try and miss anyone out, but we'll try and squeeze it all in and within, I don't know, let's say 30, 35 minutes, something along those lines. (laughs) Ambitious. um, I know. Well, we we go on our tangents, don't we? But um, yeah, they did very, very well. And we'll get into it. Yeah, rather than, I think, taking you back through each and every race, because I'm sure everyone either watched it or has read Mm. about it or has followed Paul Boy Steve's tweets about it because they were keeping us up to date. Well, while, I'll be honest, I was on holiday for some of it. Um, instead, we're actually going to talk about the implications for like British swimming, what we think this means leading forwards into trials and potentially further afield into the Olympics as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, this, like you said, there's so much to talk about. Obviously, Brits topping the medal table for the first time ever at European short course. So there's so many positives that we're going to get into, but I, I want to start on the negative side. As and always. Get this out the way <laughs> very early on. European short course scheduling. What I on know. earth? It, it, it almost got worse and worse as the days went on. I've made a little note here, actually, and it's, it it's, nuts. it's incredible. So I think it was, it was day four. So you had the women's 100 back semis and the 50 back final for the women in the same session. And then on the next day, on Saturday, you had the men's 100 free semis and also the 200 free final in the same session. And then this is the most bizarre one. On the last day, you had the women's 400 free final. And then about 10 minutes later, you had the 200 free final. Like, completely outrageous. Like, who designed that madness? Yeah. Yeah, we were sat in, what, Edinburgh Airport on the way back from Scottish Short Course where we were filming last weekend. Mm. And we just sat there and just went, hang on, hang on, hang on. There's a 4-3 and a 2-3, two events apart. Mental. Like, I get swimming has a lot of events and it's hard to fit them all into a six-week, a six-day schedule. Um, It's never easy. But we were just at Scottish Short Course and they fit it into three. Mm. And there's not clashes like this. Like, this is mental. Um, it's really tough. Like, even if you've got those two in the same session, pull them apart a bit. Like, put yeah, one sure. at the start and one at the end. Give exactly. swimmers a chance to swim both. You had no one did the double on that. Not for that women's four and two, no. I mean, for the, so. for the Saturday, for the 100 free semis and the 200 free final, yeah, you did man, have did. people doing double, like Popovich and Matt, for example, of course. But that... that that Sunday one was just impossible. How are you supposed to perform really well in a 200 free final when you've just swam a 400? <laughs> ah, dear. I don't know it's, who um, made that scheduling, but that's... We spoke, uh, it was like a few weeks ago, to Kyle Sockwell about swimming shooting itself in the foot. <laughs> like, come on, man. Everyone knows the events. Everyone knows it's six days. Sit down, work it out a little bit better than this. Like... This well, if you're, if, if you're LEN, you want the best performances so that, you know, it promotes LEN. That's the idea, isn't it? But by doing that, you you Like, from a British point of view, that the women's two and four, the clash that you've got, Freya Colbert could have swam both of those. I fully expect she, if they weren't in the same session, she would have swam both of those. But Quite you've possibly. just lost yourself a potential medal-challenging swimmer yeah, because well, of I'm the schedule. A- I know it's, it's not just going to infect people like Freya, but it affects the whole lot. So everyone's on the level playing field. But I'm thinking from LEN's point of view, you're not going to get the very best 200 freestyle final that you can possibly no, get. So it no. doesn't put it in the best light. You know, it's a very strange decision. And they could have easily sorted that out. And I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know who was in charge of that. But yes, that's the, the one negative. And I think there was only really one negative from a British point of view. But that was that was a big one. Yeah, from a British point of view, it's it's hard to say negative in my eyes. I think mm. it's just something I've seen a lot of people talking about. And yep. I think we maybe just need to address it and just say, come, come. Um, Tom Dean didn't have the best of weeks, but he is not what I would say as a short course specialist. Not and you are stuck at a meet where... 
it looks worse because Brits take four for his events mm. and like only the top two can qualify. So whereas usually like the disappointment at a meet like this wouldn't have even come because he either might not have made the team of the event or just might not have been picked because you would have picked Matt and Jimmy for the two free. Um, but like a concern next year? No. It's not, a, it's not a short course swimmer, and he just happens to be in events where we are extremely deep, like the one and really two deep. free. You know, the, even the two IM, we've got like Joe Litchfield, who is, I would say, a short, short course, course swimmer, swimmer because of the turns, yeah. and he just fell victim to the two swimmer rule, which I think I agree with because it includes more countries. But in terms of, again, from an LEM point of view, you're getting rid of some of the best swimmers, and so the performances then in a final could be better, but that's just it the way it is. It has always been the way... At yes. Europeans, you get then bigger fields when it comes to the heats. So mm, I do get right. it from that perspective. Yes. But when you're like, we're go we're gonna get through it when we go day by day. You've got three from the same nation going one, two, three. Mm. It's hard, but the biggest positive from that, on the flip side for British swimming, if you've got three very good swimmers, they know they can't take the heats easy because. Mm they're going to miss out which is what happened to tom which is what happened to a few others and it's tough to see um but i'm not worried about tom whatsoever at this point like this meet isn't gonna win in the olympics i honestly think which he is the end goal he was super unlucky in the end i think he was missing by point one point two against the second gb swimmer it's just the way it is it's, it's cutthroat just like all sport is yeah. Uh, yeah i've got no concerns he is a long course swimmer he will turn up at trials and all the other meets, Edinburgh International, whichever events he takes part in. Um, we'll get onto the 200 free anyway, but that's, like, uh, yeah. that's a all big race now. All you have to now. do is look how he swam in season long course last mm. year. Edinburgh International was one of them. AP yeah, exactly. International was another one. He, he was fast mid-season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He beat in the light of Matt and Jimmy all yeah. season long. Yeah. So just turn of the year, um, he'll be fine. Uh, let's go into it then, Dan. Let's start. On day one, where two of GB's nine gold medals kick off what is what is an astonishing meet, essentially. And we start with yeah. the women's 400 IM and a 1-2. Um, <laughs> this is one of these events where we had the two swimmer rule really kick us because Katie Shanahan didn't qualify. Oh, yeah. It just shows the depth of iron swimming in this country. But um, Abby actually won this fairly comfortably. And I think it's her first major title. If I I'm, believe uh, so, yes. Yeah, so it's a yeah. really good confidence builder going into next year, especially after a few seasons of kind of glandular fever, a yeah. bit of disappointment after Tokyo. We spoke to her straight after, and she came fourth, yes, but she, she wasn't satisfied with that. Mm. Um, feels like really good stepping stones for her leading into a big year. We did say it in a video that the British women should be at the forefront of people's minds because I think that they, they thought they, they were going to do well ahead and, with the qualifying times don't they and they do and the fact that they've now gained a lot of confidence i think this has done really wonders for abby and i think freya as well and casey who we'll talk about later on the girls they're all best friends they're all the team morale is amazing and i think this is a big a big wake-up call for the rest of the world i think i know we're potentially a little bit behind let's say you're america's or something like that you know when you've got um gretchen yeah, walsh, not gretchen walsh sorry the um Alex oh. Walsh. Alex Walsh, thank you, yeah. And Kate Douglas. What They were going 207s at the US Open. Yes, I know. <laughs> which, which is good. It's, it's very fast, so we're a little bit off that. But at the same time, Abby, Abby, Abby's done her job. Freya Colbert's done her job. Casey was just unfortunate she missed out because of the, the two-person rule. But the depth is definitely there. I think Leah Schlossen as well, but we'll, get to, we'll talk we'll about Sundry am later. But I am in the, in the women's game, and British Swimming is in a good place right now. And I'm looking forward to what happens in... What, the next season? Sorry, the next year. Yeah, we'll talk about the 2am later on because I think yeah. that event come trials might actually be as competitive as men's 2-3. Right. It's closing in on that to make that team. You've got four, I can name you four swimmers straight away who can get under the qualifying time yeah. or the nomination standard and make the team. So it's going to be a really well, we'll good We'll get battle. onto it. We'll get onto we it. Yeah, yeah. We will. Um, and then, of course, the other two medals that came in day one were the 4 by 50 freeze. The men's side won gold in a 1.22.52, which was, mm. of course, a British record. Um, some very fast swims. Ben Proud gave a little teaser of what was to come. Yeah. Um, 
my bigger question on this is do we need these events long course because this was fun this was really fun well interestingly because they did this at the edinburgh meet they've just been the scottish winters yeah. and it's quick it's well, that's it's, short course yeah it, it is yeah the same thing yeah it's it's quick it's exciting it's over quite quickly because you have the relay takers they're diving and these guys are swimming 20 seconds it's over in like a minute minute and a half something along those lines and it's it's exciting you know you have, you have to be so perfect over 50 as everyone knows but you have to be even more perfect on this relay mm. because relay takeovers are part of it as well i just think it's a brilliant thing to include but again we've just spoken about how the scheduling can affect things <laughs> like i don't more. know if there's space but then <laughs> we want we want individual 50s to be involved in olympics as well and stuff like that and then you want that yeah. included as well oh it's difficult this is going to end up being like a two-week meet so I don't know if that's possible, but it would be very exciting. It really would. Uh, I Maybe I'm on the fence with it in long course form. I think short course, it really works. Long course, maybe not so much. I think you lose a little bit of the excitement going like up and down and up and down. It's done. I suppose the other side of it being long course is that you have two at each end. So that yeah. the whole team aren't actually together oh, celebrating. Can you imagine how weird the celebration would be? Like shouting down the 50. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so from that point of view, it wouldn't be great, and it'd be a complete nightmare for like TV trying to get both ends kind of filming <laughs> at the same time. That would be like a nightmare. Oh, we but, gotta um, we gotta think about the TV channels, especially when <laughs> they don't pick it up again. Yeah, um, short course, short course. I think it works. Long course, it might need a little bit more thinking and scheduling. Would it wouldn't happen, would it? But so. like the the theme of the relays of this was, I I enjoyed them. Yeah, yeah. Like, throughout the whole meet. They're great fun. Okay, day two then. A little bit of a quieter day in terms of the medal front, but still two medals. Still two medals. Mm. So uh, one swimmer who just missed out, Anna Hopkins, she had a great meet overall. She came fourth, missing bronze by 0.02. That's literally a, That's less a difference than a blink of an eye. Yeah. It's always the difference in a 50. She just didn't quite get a hand on the wall first. What can you say? Just a bit mm. unlucky, but still very fast swims from her all week. Yep. Uh, and then the men's 100 fly, Jacob Peters, dips under 50 seconds for the first time in a 49.98. And to me, is kind of looking like the man to beat now in the, the 100 fly. Yes, it's short course, but he was impressive last year. He was making big strides. We know his, cha his training changed from uh, a little less in the pool, a little more in the gym. Um, mm. And I'd, I would expect to see results like this for him in short course if that is the way he's kind of head in his training program yeah i i honestly i think jacob is one to watch out for i do i think he's getting better and better obviously the first time he's just gone sub 50 that's a big barrier when it comes to the short course 100 fly hopefully he can do it in the long course pool that would be insane mm. then he's looking good for a podium well, i think <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i mean obviously jimmy swam the race and he is i suppose still on paper, our number one hundred fly swimmer, like he would be, Long course, yeah. he would be, yes, yeah, so he would be picked in the medley relay. I think still, um, but I think Jacob's going to put yeah, his hat, name in the hat to say, actually, I'm the one who's doing the better times right now. I'm the one in form. It'd be very, it's a difficult pick if you're it's British a swimming. It's a really, really hard really comparison hard. because actually Jacob is swimming the better hundred fly. Yes, but Jimmy, when you look at the whole meat of this is in the form of his life again. Like yes, he's back there. And you can see that from his two free. So maybe like right now it's just getting I I'd argue the two free looks like his target this year. Ooh. Um so maybe it's getting that underneath him and then the hundred fly just happens whereas before he's been like working on his hundred for that medley relay, the team player. Mm, yeah. Um, it looks like this season's gonna be a little bit more selfish, Jimmy, which is rightly so. Um <laughs> I'm not putting a favorite on either of them actually. Like leading. No, honestly, trials. I am split down the middle of whoever's yeah. going to win that hundred fly. I mean, who knows? I, Ed Mildred could should, could come through, or Jamie Ingram could come through at trials. Who knows? But these two are the top two guys. But Jacob Ed is swimming really well. Good week. Ed he Mildred did. did have a good meet actually. Yeah, yeah he you did. talk about that. I think he finaled in the two fly, came seventh. It's um, good memory if that is true. <laughs> I can't remember. But I know he swam well, and he's, again, all experience building for, for him. Um, yeah, I've I've put him in the brackets of fringe summer for a while, and it just needs that little step up. He has made his move to performance centre, so hopefully that move has helped him. He's been, been there now a while. He's been there a while, yeah. Yeah, so hopefully that will 
pay dividends quite soon. Hopefully this is the year for him. But Jacob is doing amazing. The last two years, mm. year and a half, two years, he progress. is just getting better and better. And I, I think he's going to do wonders. I think he is going to be on the team, I think. It's just whether he gets on that medley relay, because that's, uh, that's a big choice, I think. Mm. I was right. Ed Mildred, seventh. Two fly, 153.53. But I'm jumping forward a few days. On that, that is incredible memory. <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing it on a British Women Instagram story. Uh, and then the second medal of day two came in the men's 4x50 medley relay, where the guys won a silver against a very experienced Italian team. Ollie Morgan, Archie Goodman, Jacob Peters, and Matt Richards bring home the silverware. Um, I like the like the makeup of that team. It's It feels like, I don't know, four or five years down the line, that makeup could still be there. That well, they're all that still be there. They're all that young, aren't they? They're all in yeah. their very early twenties, twenty one, twenty two, that sort of range. And so, yeah, four years time, it could be the exact same team, hmm. which bodes well, I think. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Good experience builder for Ollie and Archie as well. Day three, possibly the best swim from a British swimmer, um, if you don't count an Irish one. Uh, ben Proud in the 53 goes a 20.18 to rattle Caleb Dressel's 50 freestyle world record. Obviously a new British and European record. The second fastest time ever. There's already been plenty of videos breaking it down from, mm -hmm. well, coach James Gibson, swimsuit guy. Uh, essentially, his underwaters and breakouts look back to back to world class. They've always been world class but now world leading i know that i tell you what if there's a perfect swim now the problem is my knowledge is not great when it comes to fine details of sprinting like he can break down every little minute detail but for me that was like a perfect swim the speed he came off the wall with yeah. the underwaters the breakout just amazing like i don't know where he would improve on that the, the catch under the water was awesome holding the water where do you go i mean he's getting Weirdly, getting better and better. I think that, you know, when he had his, almost his disappointment in Tokyo, he labelled it a disappointment, he came fifth, didn't perform how he wanted. Ever since then, obviously last year, he had his amazing summer, his three golds, he was undefeated. He's now come into this season, basically nearly hitting a world record, going the fastest time, potentially, or second fastest time, sorry. Mm. He is just getting stronger and stronger. I d he's a monster, isn't he? Yeah, an absolute ridiculous. animal. Ridiculous. I'm looking at this, and I'm, I'm, I was hoping there would be something in the splits that could tell me, yeah, he could improve there. <laughs> but the reaction time was uh, 0.58. That's that's great. very good. Yeah. 25 meters, 9.64. Yep. That's pretty good. And the last 25 was a 10.5. Like what? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's that's what he only he his coaches would understand or anyone who's a sprint specialist will absolutely know where he needs to work on to find that, that extra what was it 200 seeds off the world record or 400 something along those lines. Uh the short course that season's done now. Short course season's done. I'd say that's box ticked. Move he on. He really he course. really wanted to win that medal in his interview with yeah. him afterwards. That was a big goal of his. I think that was a medal that he hadn't won outside of the Olympics that. of course. Um and he was I think what well, I can't remember what he said, but he was being quite humble about that. He knows he's not the best sprinter ever because obviously when Caleb was swimming, now you got Cam swimming as well as he is, and he he doesn't put himself in the same bracket as being a top sprinter or the best sprinter at the time. Uh, I, I, I that's hard. It's it's <laughs> hard harsh right? with yeah. his ridiculous year. He's up there. It surely has to be, doesn't he? Yeah, like. In my eyes, I'm very biased. I'm very, yeah, very of course. Biased. We both are. Yeah. Um, does this time make everyone sit up and think Ben's now got a chance against McAvoy in the long course pool? Oh, we'd have to see him when he comes to the first time he races long course. I guess that will be the best gauge because the 53 short course is a completely different race to mm. long course. There's more elements, isn't there? Obviously, the turn and the underwater. And there's another yeah, but breakout. if there's if there's one thing that Ben could do to put a little bit of pressure on McAvoy, it's the first 15. It is. True. And this, to me, makes it look like Ben's worked very hard at improving an already world-class first 15. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I still stand by Cam is the fastest man in the water when it comes to swim speed. I don't think there's anyone yeah. that would yeah. beat him. No one would beat him on top of the water, but Ben can beat him and I think does beat him on the first 15. So he's yeah. got to utilize that to his maximum advantage. 
and then effectively, weirdly, on a 50, hold on, <laughs> which is bizarre to say. Um, but again, I'm not a sprinting guru, so he, he would know what to do. But the, that's a fantastic swim. I mean, I'm yeah. so it's almost a shame that he didn't break the world record. But either way, that's a, an incredible swim. And then we go on from the 53 to the women's 200 back where we have a 1-2. Yeah. Medi Harris in the two back short course. Um, this is a bit of Dave Hemming's magic now that she's moved <laughs> over there. To beat Katie Shanahan, who is the two back specialist. I can't say I saw it coming going in. Nope. What I would say is clearly this is working on a bit more endurance for a 100 back. Dave Hemmings, if you're listening, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, uh, and backstroke in this country is good. It's it strong is. because two back, like Italians are pretty good women's two back. They are. Yeah, they are. Uh, I, again, I'm much the same as you. I thought Casey would go and be our strongest swimmer, I think, there. Maybe even winning gold herself. But Medi, I would say, is more of a 100 meter swimmer. The fact that she was able to hold on the last 100. It was and a out. 202. Yeah, it's very good. Very She's good beat indeed. Panziera. Yeah. No, really good swim. I just think maybe backstroke in this country is getting better. Mm. We've been digging at it in for quite a while, saying we need a backstroker on kind of the women's side and the men's side. Now, I know Kathleen Dawson had her time in Tokyo, and she was breaking she was very European good records, then, yeah. of course, actually, at the time. Obviously, she's been through an injury. We'll talk about that because she made a final later on in the meet. But, yeah, Mehdi is obviously the move to, to Loughborough has has worked so far, but we don't know that for sure because, obviously, it's just short course at the moment. But... In terms of skills, which is what short course season really is all about, the turns and the underwaters, that seems to be working well for her. And hopefully it transitions into the 100 back long course, which I think is her more suitable race or her more yeah. favoured race. Uh, it'd be interesting if she keeps the two back on her schedule in the long oh. course season. Um, see what happens when they race in like two weeks time. The, the Dave Hemming squad go to the Northampton Open meet. So I'm, I'm interested to see what happens there with them. Yeah, because I suppose for Freya Colbert, I don't know if she's going to enter the two back when it comes to trials. Maybe that's a, an event Medi targets. Because like we, we've always said, it's quite an easy race to final in. You just got to go, just just have to go 2-8, which is, I think that could be in the as realms in of Olymp possibility. As in Olympic final. Olympic final, yeah. I think that's in the realms of possibility for Medi. Yeah, I would I think agree. That maybe, that's, maybe that's the target. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As well as 100, of course. 100%, 100%. Uh, and then the... Last medal of that day came in the women's 4x50 medley relay. Impressive considering there isn't really a 50 fly specialist in the squad that went. Um, Ken mm. McInnes is, in my eyes, more of a 2, two. comes down to 1. Yeah. Um, but Imogen Clark with a rocket leg of a 28.66 kind of underlined yeah. why I know a lot of people have been like calling for her selection for British swimming oh. for year after year, yeah. especially when it comes to like world short course. Mm -hmm. um, she's not been given the chance to show what she can do really um, which is a real disappointment like because there's been the bias towards the long course selections yeah. going to short course meets but like she showed her class this week yeah I mean she will get onto her 50 brushstroke later on but she goes to these international meets when given the opportunity and she does come back swimming well mm. always and either there or thereabouts on the podium um, this meet, obviously, she's come away with bronze medals, which is incredible for her. But because she's had that opportunity, she's been able to bring that back to British Swimming. Will that change? I really hope so. I yeah, really do. She's definitely more of the 50 specialist. Yes, and definitely. Just needs to translate it over to the 100. But we know she's been working on that for a while now. Yes, yeah. Day four then, three medals for British Swimming. Kick things off. Duncan Scott in Duncan We Trust, gets his gold medal in the 200 IM with an incredible breaststroke leg. Yeah. So you hit a British record in a 150.98. Yeah, and I do wonder if this is the event he now targets the most. Because oh. we know how <laughs> deep the 203 is, and he is, without doubt, he's our number one 200 IM swimmer. The problem is, when it comes to the international stage, Where's when you've got... Silver? You've got Carson Foster there. You've got Wang Shun, who's the Chinese IM swimmer who won Olympic gold in Tokyo. Then, of course, you've got Liam Shong. Um, it's a deep field when it comes to the international scene. But then you could say the same for the 203. He's in he's in tough races. We said this about um, Dino at the start. It's uh, it's hard. I don't know what he targets. Obviously, I assume he's just going to race all of them because that's what he does. 
and yeah, every yeah. time he and every time he res- he brings it home and does what he does best. It's funny. Yeah. This is another conversation we had in Edinburgh Airport, waiting for our flights. We were like, "Look, if you break it down, Duncan's best shot, best shot, and mm. Olympic gold is probably the two hundred free. That's correct. I would but say so. it's incredibly hard to make that team. Yeah, in the two free. <laughs> it's insane, isn't it? Well, I was saying to you. I mean, we, we haven't even got to the two hundred free yet. We're, 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 it's next is we're, next day. So we're jumping we'll it. But um, yeah, listen, ah. Uh, Duncan swam amazing. His breaststroke is improving tenfold mm. at the Which moment. Which it does make me think that I am's maybe a little bit more of the target. Um, mm. But like we said, like the two frees there, he's not going to not race it. Of course, he wants to be on that four by two relay, and then at trials, you know what? There's four guys that can make the team. Two are going to be disappointed. It's God, a little break. bit of a coin flip now. Yeah, it is. Yeah, about who that is. We'll we'll get into it when we look at day five. But the other medals on. Day four, the women's hundred free. Both Anna and Freya, like yet again, they're two very different swimmers, but two very, <laughs> very similar swimmers. Um, they're on the podium yet again at Europeans. Anna with a silver and a PB, which, like we yes. said, at, right at the top, swimming very well at this meet in a fifty-one-six-six, and then Freya just closing speed as always. Like you expect that when she comes down from the two to the one. Yeah, we haven't talked much about pbs but i think a lot of these guys did pb obviously yeah. duncan just did with the british record like we were just saying but um a lot of the guys were pbing which... i think this is why we started this podcast saying like there's so many positives because these british swimmers are swimming fast they are yeah it's it's not normally at this sort of time of year you don't really you, you should be in hard training blocks i don't know if they they did taper. targeted this if you tapered yeah, yeah so they must have targeted this quite a lot i suppose and then the the next taper would be then trials of course so maybe it's an early taper i don't really i don't know but i was ah who was i speaking to i was speaking to someone up at edinburgh and do you know what i'm I'm really sorry i've forgotten who it was (laughs) but it's actually a really good chance to test your taper ahead of olympics and ahead of trials and just see how you've reacted to what the plan is gonna be put in place and i would say a lot of these guys it's worked well, I think the altitude stuff is a, an absolute must. Yeah, that actually, seems if, to you, work. if you go through a lot of these medalists and a lot of these finalists, mm. I'd probably say 75% of them yeah. went to Flagstaff or have been to altitude. It clearly makes a difference. We had Archie on, didn't we, the other week, yeah. and he was talking about how altitude can help and that the adapt- adaptations your body goes through let's not go too deep into that let's uh if you want to listen back to what happens altitude training to your body go listen to the episode with archie mm. Cooper. i think that's the best place to go but yeah like it is funny like i see all of the photos of who went to flagstaff and i'm like yep they did well at europeans yep that one did well yep 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 <laughs> yeah and I, I think anna and freya just they do what they always do in 103 they weirdly two different summers two different heights two different styles and yet they hit pretty much the same sort of time it's uh it's a weird one i think but uh yeah silver and bronze for both of those girls and um they get medals later on if i remember correctly as well in more relays so yeah they do well done for saving that tangent <laughs> <laughs> uh day five then the best day in the pool for british women three golds Two bronzes. We'll start with a women's 100 back. Like we said, Medi, an incredible shape right now. She's doing really well. And as you teased, Dan, Kathleen Dawson, a fourth. She'll be mm. disappointed not to make the podium, but it does look like the road to recovery is on. If we fast forward to trials, I think she's put her name back in the hat again. If you've got your names of Lauren Cox, Casey Shannon, I think will be a, a challenge in the 100 back as well, as well yeah. as Medi, of course. There's four girls there that go into two slots. It's going to be a very interesting race, both on the men's and the women's side. It's going to backstroke in this country, I think, is getting a bit of depth, and I think it's what's needed mm. to try and push these times and these these spots on, I suppose. So, yeah, it's very interesting. It's good to see Kathleen back, of course. She's obviously doing a lot of work up there with um, Steve and Bradley up in Sterling, and um, she's not far away from getting international podiums yet again. I know. It's really good to see her back. I think it took maybe six months longer than... Most people were expecting, I think people saw her racing last summer at Champs and thought, oh, she's back. Thank God. Mm. Um, but it takes time to get back up to where she was because she was in the top one, two, three of women's 100 backstroke. She was. She's the fastest European swimmer 
by I wouldn't say a country mile, but she was she was winning. She was getting European records. So um, she's beating Kira Toussaint, who was in great form herself. Yeah, definitely. Time. So I'm looking forward to her return. Yeah, I'm, I hope she she does really well when it comes to trials. And then we have to talk about the men's two free. Then like mm. big talking point, Matt wins gold. Jimmy Silver to beat out Popovich in his home pool, coming fourth. Mm. Came fourth. That no shakes. Like really good swim. Yeah. Nothing, oh yeah, yeah. Nothing wrong with the swim whatsoever. Um, but Matt's slowly solidifying himself as a favorite for the Olympics now. I would say, if he gets on the team. <laughs> well, yes. yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, that's the biggest thing, isn't it? You know, you've, we've got four incredible two hundred freestylers, and two of them are not going to be swimming the individual. It's going to be a heartbreaking. Like it's going to be, it's going to be heartbreaking for two of them. It's going to be actually quite a painful watch, I think, at trials just yep. to see the other two. Oh, it's going to be difficult. But um, at the moment, you have to say Matt is favourite to be the number one 200 freestyler because he is well, he's winning golds every time he races time. it. So, yeah. And his closing speed right now is I mean, it's beating Popovich. And he was probably known for the fastest back-end 50, I think, or one of. So, yeah, mm. he's doing really well. And then Jimmy, I think that's probably the biggest talking point here. Yeah, the move has worked. Definitely. He does a different sort of tactic and it's a tactic I really like. He like like you attack it from the get go and you just hang on. And he did hang on. He hang he hang on for silver in the end with Rapsis just closing in behind him. But um yeah, I don't know what he's gonna do come trials. I mean it's gonna be fascinating. He's really come back to find his form. Like I think that's the first time he's PB'd for seven years. Incredible. Well, Incredible. Uh, was it P B or was it like first international individual medal? Uh, it might have been both. I'm not quite sure. Medal uh, individually it... doesn't sound right. No, I think so. It was I think a, you're. I think you're right. But yeah, yeah, it definitely was a PB for both of them. Um, yeah. I think what if anyone hasn't seen the interview that Nick Hope did on Poolside, go have a look just to yeah. see the emotion of what it means for him to be back racing individual 200 frees on the world, well, European stage, but like at international meets. Mm. It means the world to him to be back up to this level. Um, and yep. rightly so, like he's been patient. He's been a t- the ultimate team player for British Definitely. Women for a very long time. Uh, there were whispers like uh, a few weeks ago, a month ago, that, you know, Jimmy's the favorite for the two free at trials. And I was kind of <laughs> sat up at that. I was like, he's only just gone to Millfield. Where's this come from? Where's this talk come from? And then you see him do this and he doesn't usually race short course. No, it's... Uh... I don't uh, know what I don't know what Ryan the, the is doing. There. I don't know what he's doing at Millfield, but he has got Matt firing. He's now got Jimmy firing in a matter of months. Really, it's, it's amazing what he's doing. I wouldn't be surprised if more people go down to Millfield because of the results that these guys are getting. And it's not just these guys. Emily Large as well is swimming amazing at Millfield. Mm. Alex Painter, uh, uh, among others. Yeah, I don't know where Jimmy goes with this. He he might be the one to knock out either potentially a world champion the Olympic silver medalist or the Olympic champion. Can you believe that? <laughs> That's insane. So, uh, yeah, no, I, honestly, he's doing amazing. And yeah, like you were saying, the emotion, he, he wears his heart on his sleeve. And um, yeah, I think it's great. I think it's amazing what he's doing. I love it. Like every time Jimmy races and every time he does the interview these days, I love it. Yeah, it's entertaining, um, isn't it? I do want to give a shout out as well on the back of these two frees that Jack McMillan actually fell foul of the two swimmer rule ahead of Tom Dean because he came fourth in the Yeah, heats, can you believe? Yeah. And he went a 142.4. So while we say there's these four incredible swimmers that British Swimming have fighting out for these two spots, there are other swimmers who are going to yeah. be throwing their names in the hat. So Jack McMillan, Joe Litchfield, who did really well in the 2-3 last mm. year. Just everyone knows by now, trials, last race of trials, it always is. Yeah. Just... It's going to be unbelievable. It is. Um, and that wasn't even like the last medal of the day, day five. Like the women's 2 a.m. Abby backs up her 4 a.m. and wins the double. Yeah. Katie in fourth. Leah Slosson, she missed out the final with this three set, with this two swimmer rule. She finished in like a 207.8 in the Just heats. Not bad. Like these girls had to go yeah. fast to make the team. And like I said, when we were talking about the 4 a.m., this 2 a.m. with Abby, Katie, Leah, Freya, Colbert. Mm. it's stacked. Like, yeah. we just talked about the two free. Those are four girls that, on paper, there's not that much separating them other than 
Abby's now a double European champion. Yeah, four summers to squeeze into two again. It's one of those situations. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for women's medley at the moment. Uh, I would probably say Abby is still the person to beat, even though Katie beat her last uh, tramps, didn't she? Actually, then mm-hmm. one of the races, I would say, of the whole meet. Um, it might happen again. You never know. But again, another massive build, uh, confidence builder for Abby. Um, Katie, probably a little bit unfortunate to finish fourth. But I see if I'm Katie, I think I would target the back more so than the IMs. But at the same time, she could easily find on the fourth, three, uh, four IM, sorry. And yeah, then no, she's you, always got the four. 200. I think she'll always keep the four IM. Yes, yeah. And they've both got, when we're, we're talking about Freya as well, both Freya and Casey have got a great chance in the Forge IM when it comes to, granted if they qualify, of course, but let's, when it comes to Paris, they've got a great chance of meddling. But um, yeah, it's uh, weird that Leah Schlossen is just in this sort of era at the moment where it's just one of those stacked events. Uh, Jacob Peters finished fourth in the 50 fly with a British record in 22-1, which it's kind of stupidly impressive when you think that uh, Ben Proud usually swims a 50 fly. And I think that just shows how well Jacob is swimming. Yeah. Yeah. He's just doing everything right at the moment. And to finish behind No Ponting, who did the triple. Yeah, he did really well. Sebastian Sabo, who I believe has the joint world record. He yes, does. I think that's correct. Yeah. And then Maxime Grosset, who was the hottest fly swimmer in the world last year. Exactly. Yeah. So that result of fourth, actually, it was pretty decent. The British record either way is pretty decent, of course. He wasn't far behind either. Um, yeah. yeah. I just echo what we've said about previously about Jacob. He's he's moving. He's like on he's the right on track. On the upward trajectory. Yeah. Yeah. Then the mixed 4x50 freestyle relay, another gold in the British pocket, a British record. Great swims from everyone, actually, on yeah. this one. Ben Prouder, 20.39, kind of backing up his 50 from the previous day. I know there were a few whispers that he would go after an unofficial world record to lead off the team. Yeah, uh, It's hard to replicate what was almost perfection hmm. previously. Uh, and then Lewis Burris, 20.69. Anna Hopkin, 22.95. Damn. Yeah, uh, and Freya Anderson, the 23.72 to finish. That it, close to the perfect relay swim, really. Yeah, I'm not, that's going to be a hard British record to beat, I think. Because mm-hmm. you've got Proud, who's an out and out 50. I think Burris is pretty solid at 50, of course. Anna, if it, Anna is as well. It's just Freya Anderson, who isn't a 50 specialist, but she did her job pretty well i would say mm. so that's gonna be a really difficult record to break and yeah a very good gold they all swam really well as this at this as did the whole team and we haven't even finished yet <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll keep rattling through this now this podcast is gone a bit longer than dan's prediction yeah sure. <laughs> and then we finish things up for the brits in day six with five medals to end the meet um let's talk about luke greenbank dan 200 yeah. backstroke and let's talk more than just this individual swim um, let's go a bit broader and talk about Rotterdam at the same time. So 148.5, British record, short course 200 backstroke. And the reason I want to talk about Rotterdam as well is because he's already swam this year underneath the nomination time for the 200 backstroke and he crushed a 156 long course 200 back. Yeah, He looks back to his best. And it's exciting. Very very exciting i think he had a down year last year and he started in the pool i think may from when we spoke to him yeah may june yeah, may june like him and adam had the same sort of thing they went away they came back while everyone else was off racing at worlds mm. these two were training with mel and it's clear to see the progress like he's back there's no doubt yeah. about it in my mind he will always have his aerobic base under him he yep. is he does so many meters uh, in training, and he will just... Yeah, it's, it, it, I don't know how to explain it. He will always have his aerobic base underneath him, so there's always a level of fitness that he will always have. And so he just needs to tap into that again and find a bit of form, a bit of confidence. He's had his rest, and he's backfiring, both long and short course. British record, that was, that 148 in uh, in, in in Romania. So, um, yeah, and then he's obviously translated that into long course as well. This was before Rostam, wasn't it? Rostam was the week before. Yeah. Um, so, yes, uh, very exciting. Very exciting. I think, I think he, may even, just... he may even challenge the podium again when it comes to Paris based on oh, that. He's fully laid down a marker in world swimming. Already. Absolutely. Already. Yeah, absolutely. And kind of almost shown to 
the rest of British swimming, like he's the boss of the two back. Like he is. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. If he swims anything like that at champs, it's going to be really hard to beat. And yeah, he's got exactly. another training cycle to go through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Again, the, the the hundred is up for grabs, but when it comes to the two hundred, Luke is the the guy to beat. Definitely. Still. Yeah. yeah, back, yeah. In my mind, yeah, hundred yeah. percent right now. The, I guess the the only disappointment it was a silver <laughs> in the short course yeah. two back this weekend. It was a silver. Um, only just, mm. but still, like British record PB swimming out of oh, this world. Solid you swim. can't ask for too yeah. much more. Yeah, too much more. Now, swimmer who didn't get silver, Freya Anderson in the women's two free. Freya Anderson and Freya Colbert make the podium just to show that the depth of quality that these two girls have. Um, the four by two for British women next year in the women's side might be one to quietly starting, look at a little bit. Starting it, to get there. Yes. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Um, I wonder if you throw Medi in there because if, if <laughs> our, you know, our theory is correct, if she's targeting the 200 a little bit more as well as the 100, 100 back, maybe the 200 mm. freeze in there a little bit as well. And then you throw in Lucy Hope and maybe even Abby. Abby. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a looking a pretty good team. And obviously the Freyers are the the two top girls in the, in the team. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's looking a relatively decent team. I don't know if they challenged for the podium. Obviously, the Australians are extremely strong, so as are the Chinese, as are the Americans. But you never know. You, you never know. For me, this this event kind of backed up our talk that the, the girls are the ones to look at mm. at this meet. We said it in a video on our YouTube channel leading into it. Um, and they really did perform top-notch all week yeah. long. I think oh, they really were, did. there were very few disappointments all week long, especially from the big guns that you expect this from. Um, yeah. And it, it's, conf it's a massive confidence builder, especially when you, you just said you throw the Americans, the Chinese and the Australians into the mix in women's swimming. It's a very different ball game. Yes. But the Brits have momentum behind them right now, which is a big, a mm. big thing, I think, against that competition and needed. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to seeing what they do in the future. We've tried to big up the women's side of British swimming, even though the men's side are the ones bringing in the medals and they get the headlines because because of the 4x2 mainly and now the 4x1. But I think the women are starting to get there. They're starting to be, they're starting to catch up, I think, which is, mm. I think, very exciting for British swimming. Rightly so. Then, then another medal on the board for Duncan Scott in the 400 IM to round out his week. Uh, a four minutes point seventeen, just outside his own British record. Mm. Uh, maybe a little bit of an argument that he could focus on a four AM, but we've already gone through all of the permutations of what yeah. <laughs> depth of British swimming means for him. Again, his breaststroke looks strong in this, maybe just not quite strong enough to bring home the gold. But it's the end of a long week. Yeah, the breaststroke is definitely something he's improved on. He did attack this race, but he just didn't quite have the back end to, I think it was Rossetti who beat him in the end by two, maybe three seconds. But um, yeah, it's a very good effort from him either way. And then Imogen Clark ends, like we've already said, an impressive meet for her with a joint bronze in the 50 metres breaststroke. Uh, we've already spoken about it, but really, if you're winning medals at international meets, take her. She's a 50 specialist, so what? Like, you're winning medals at these meets. She would have probably won medals elsewhere for British swimming. And, like, Lauren Cox brought a lot of oh, eyes yeah. on the sport yeah. last summer, yeah. especially women's side. Imogen could have done that before as well. Like, Absolutely. Give her the confidence to be racing 50s. Yeah, I mean, I was going to bring up Lauren, and actually you've stolen exactly what I was just going to say, so I'm just going to almost echo what you said. And Imogen has just as good a chance as winning medals as Lauren does, and so you have to pick her, surely. That's 100%. what I'd be doing. Yeah. And then we finish the meet for British swimming, if we talk about the individuals, uh, with Matt finishing fourth in the 100 metres freestyle, Jacob Whittle finishing eighth. I know Jacob has actually made leaps and bounds and strides in the 100 recently. He's PB. had PBs, yep. mm -hmm. um, especially like we just spoke about Luke at the Rotterdam meet. Jacob was incredibly impressive at the Rotterdam meet, so his move looks like it's paid off. Yep. Um, just unfortunate Matt missed out on the touch, really. That, that was as simple as it. But the two guys in the middle, actually, were world class. Maxime well, yeah. Grosset and uh, Morezzi. <coughs> Just unbelievable. 103 is deep in the men's yeah. game, as is the 200. And in fact, freestyle in general, because you go all the way up to the uh, the distance yeah. event as well. So, uh, yeah. 
that's just an unfortunate fourth. But I think Popovich has probably deserved a bit of a podium there with his homecoming. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, I think it's good for the crowd that he actually did get on the podium eventually. So oh, the atmosphere yeah. when he was poolside looked nuts. I know when he walked out the first time. Oh boy, yeah, that was loud. Okay, so that rounds up the meet for British swimming. 23 medals, 9 golds, 8 silvers, 6 bronze. Makes it the best ever meet at a European short course that we've had for British swimming. We spoke about this in the intro. This will be undeniably a huge boost leading into January, February, the winter months, which are tough. All of these swimmers have now got momentum, especially in the pre-Olympic year. Um mm. And I'm excited. I'm really excited for 2024. Now, we cannot finish this podcast. Of course. Without speaking about a previous guest and an Irish man who has turned the world upside down in distance Literally. swimming. Yeah. Um, Dan Whiffin has just had the meat of his life, and I still feel like he's getting started. So he so won cool. three golds in the 400, the 1500, and the 800. And he obliterated a Grant Hackett world record in the 800, which has stood for 15 years for a reason. It was a good swim, like a very, mm. very fast time. And he took near three seconds off it. Yeah, I think one of the most amazing things that he did is that I think he negative splitted that race. Yeah, I think he, his I think final 400 was a 3.39, making the first 400, like, 3.40. So he went quicker on the back end. That is sensational. He swam it like an Aussie. Yeah, <laughs> literally, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a massive world record. I mean, Grant Hackett was one of, if not the best distance swimmer that we've ever had do in, in the sport. And he's just broken that world record. That is a sensational swim. He's been talking about it for a while. And as all you can talk about it as much as you want, but the fact of talking it and then doing it, not many people can do that, and he's just done it. He is now on top of distance swimming in the con in, in the country, definitely in the country of <laughs> Ireland, in the world. He is the man to beat, has to be. It's now whether he can transition it or translate it over to the long course pool, which I believe he can. I mean, Andy yeah. Manley is doing such a good job of him. Um, geez, I don't know where he could go. I mean, is he going to be the one to break the, the Sun Yang ward record in the 15? I'm glad you moved to that. The 800 long course is yeah impossible. Uh, the 1500, the Sun Yang one, the one that everyone wants to go. Everyone hates that world record for a very good reason. Um, I think it's a possibility. It is. The only thing is distance swimming is as good as it has ever been. Yeah. But in a Olympic season, he has laid down a godly marker the biggest mark you could possibly mark yeah. you know so yeah i mean he we always wanted an irish medal from him or from any irish summer really at the mm. olympic games he is now almost a favorite to not only get a medal but potentially to win it i know you've got half new in there you've got bobby fink in there i mean the the names keep coming they they are it's a big old field and he's right up there um sensational swim i don't know what else to talk about it it's just an incredible swim I love the reactions afterwards. He's not your... I think he knows. He knows he needs to be a showman at these things. He's He's got his own YouTube channel with his twin, Nathan. They yeah. they know what it means to be in front of the camera. Um, he's not just sitting there on the lame rope, puffing and panting and saying whatever. He is on the lame rope, splashing all over the place, doing the Fortnite signs, <sighs> giving the celebrations. Um, and isn't that what swimming needs? Yeah. It needs, it needs stuff like personality. That personality character and then obviously to do world records the swim as well to match that uh, yeah it's a good old mixture i love it i love it and yeah we predicted months ago now that ireland would win a medal in paris and I, i'm i'm looking more and more confident about that <laughs> yeah. every time he gets in the water yeah um, so that just about rounds up this week's episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. Thank you to everyone who stuck with us through this European short course review, speaking about the Brits and, of course, the incredible Daniel Whiffin. Um, we are going to be back in one week's time, so please subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify if you haven't already. And me and Dan will catch you in seven days' time. Yeah, thank you for listening, everyone, and we'll catch you on the next one. You've been listening to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast with Scott and Dan. 
We want to thank you for joining us and invite you to subscribe to the show as well as checking out the Propulsion Swimming YouTube channel for weekly tutorials and videos to get your swimming fix. We will be back next week. Until then, we'll catch you on the next one.